All right, so here we are moving forward from Lewis structures, being able to use the ability to draw Lewis structures to predict um, electron domain geometry. And then from there, we are going to predict molecular geometry in the next topics. So what we have here um, doesn't look very different at first glance from the topic that we just did, drawing Lewis structures. And that is because Lewis structures, the ability to draw Lewis structures is imperative to be able to predict electron domain geometry. Now, I do want to say that electron domain and uh, molecular geometry, these things are all uh, all verified experimentally with very, uh, very technical procedures and equipment, very expensive equipment. But it can be predicted, which is what we're doing with Lewis structures. OK. So we are going to predict the arrangement of electron groups, and that is called electron domain geometry. Okay, so we're going to again predict the arrangement of electron groups around the central atom. All right, so what is this uh, molecule or polyatomic ion that we're looking at? Here it is. The methyl anion. So it's going to start with us drawing the Lewis structure. Okay, so you've gotten, I hope, plenty of practice drawing Lewis structures. I've put additional practice in the module at the bottom under extra helpful resources. There's additional practice with answer keys if you want uh, that extra practice. So let's draw it very quickly. Okay, we have, and I'm going to do this. Uh, very quickly because we've done it now. Uh, I have I have seven valence electrons to work with contributed uh, by these atoms plus because it's an anion with a negative one charge that adds another uh, valence electron. So I have eight valence electrons to work with. Carbon is going to be my central atom. I'm just going to draw it like this. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and this last electron pair goes there. Now, because this is an ion and not a neutral molecule, I need to show that this is charged. Okay, what is the charge on this anion? Negative one. So I'm just going to put it within brackets and put a negative sign there outside of the brackets to show that there is a uh, a, a charge, an overall net charge associated with this, okay? So the next step is this. We have a Lewis structure, and the first questionnaire asks, how many electron groups are around the central carbon atom? Note, one electron group means one lone pair, one single bond, double bond, or triple bond. So all I need to do is count electron groups around this central carbon atom. Now, even though this is a pair of atoms, it counts as one electron group. And what they're saying is, even if it were a double bond or a triple bond, that would still be only one electron group. Same here, it would just be one, okay? So just that cluster of electrons just counts as one electron group. So around the central carbon atom, I have one, two, three, and this pair here, this long pair, is four. All right, so I have one, two, three, four electron groups around the central carbon atom. So the next question is, what phrase best describes the arrangement of these electron groups around the central carbon atom? That's the question. Well, how do I figure that out? Well, if you look at the, the PowerPoint slides or you look here, or the explanation in Alex, you will see that the number of electron groups or electron domains is going to tell you what the geometry of those electron domains is likely to be. So if around the central carbon atom I have two electron domains, only two, then it'd be linear. If around the central carbon atom I had three, one, two, three electron domains, 
then it'd be what we call trigonal planar, the shape of a triangle, but all on one plane, okay? In this case, we have four electron domains around the central carbon atom. Four electron domains around the central carbon atom, the little dot there. The electron domain geometry in this case is tetrahedral, okay? Now, what I highly recommend you guys do is click on the simulation that we are doing this week in lab. Open up that simulation. I've always, I've also linked it in Alex. Build this, or build any molecule with four electron domains so that you can see the three-dimensional tetrahedral shape. It's gonna be very confusing to try to visualize until you can actually see a model. If we were in the class, we'd have handheld models that you could see it. So you're gonna to have to really just kind of build it on that simulation so that you can see uh, uh, the three-dimensional structure of this. So here you can see, so this, this tetrahedral, let's look at it. These images here are, are much easier to look at as far as the 3D geometry. You see that this bond is actually coming out at you. You see that there. And then you see that these bonds actually jutted into the page there. So uh, sometimes you may see uh, things drawn like this with the dashes and the wedges. So let's say I'm drawing methane, for example. We've got a carbon atom there in the middle. I got one hydrogen atom here. And then let's say I have a hydrogen atom there, a hydrogen atom there, and then I have a hydrogen atom here. Okay, you see these different kind of lines. I've got a solid line here, just a straight line. That means that it's on the plane of this page. Okay, it's just laying on top of the page. But because of the tetrahedral shape, uh, electron domain uh, geometry, well, these electrons in this bond are on this page, but the electrons in this bond, those those dashes mean that they go into the page, okay? The electrons on that bond are going away from you into the page. This solid wedge that you see here means that it's coming at you, or it's coming at your face, okay? So they're all kind of pointing in different, in different uh, of directions, whether it's on the plane or into the paper or coming out at you, which again is why I say that you need guys need to go into the simulator and just build these and see what it looks like three-dimensionally. So again, we determined that the electron domain geometry is tetrahedral. And it's very easy uh, to determine that. You could just use this table here. You could use this chart here that I have. If it's got Four electron domains, the electron domain geometry is tetrahedral. Simple as that. Okay, so you will find tetra, tetrahedral there in the drop down box, and you're done. So, in the next topic, we will move it one step further and we'll go from electron domain geometry to molecular geometry. But for right now, let's just uh, get a good grasp on determining electron domain geometry, and that includes not only lone pairs, but also bonded pairs of electrons.